You're tuning into Black and White Sports on YouTube. The no holds barred truth on sports. The main event starts now. I'm back. Rodrance for Black and White Sports. Oh, we're going to talk about possibly the number one person that disappointed me the most as the world was, oh, losing their minds over St. George Floyd last year. That person would be one Drew Brees, somebody that I really respected. Um, man, he was one of my favorite players in the NFL. He come out and made some comments about how the how he would not kneel for the national anthem, and he did not agree with doing so. And of course, every woke mf'er on Twitter and in the media went on the attack of Drew Brees, and in standard operating procedure, that sob kneeled. He bent the knee himself, both knees, to the woke mob including some of his repugnant teammates like Michael Thomas and that dude Malcolm Jenkins out there. Well, one of the ones that jumped his case the most was Maria Taylor. Yeah, that Maria Taylor from ESPN, who is now with NBC Sports. Well, guess what? So is Drew Brees. Hmm. Now, she said some rather interesting things about Drew Brees last year, throwing him completely under the bus, and then rolling the bus over on top of him. Well, it seems that they're chummy now that Drew Brees has bent the knee. Let's get to this. This is from OutKick. Maria Taylor seems to have forgiven Drew Brees. Well, here's a turn of events. This is from our boy Bobby Burak. After spending last summer maligning Brews. Uh, Drew Brees' character, Maria Taylor is now taking friendly photos with her new office sharing work buddy. And this is what it said. This was from last year, actually. ESPN's Maria Taylor doesn't buy Drew Brees' apology. Shame on you. And underneath here, she virtue signals by saying, quote, my patience left my body when I watched George Floyd take his last breath says the NBA Countdown host. And there they are at NBC Sports PR. NBC Sports NFL rookie teammates at Maria Taylor and at Drew Brees on location in Atlanta. I guess that was last night for the Falcons and the Browns preseason game. You may remember Drew Brees turned heel last summer for the worst possible reason. He expressed support for the American flag and for American servicemen. Quote, I'll always stand for the flag because of what it means to me and honor all those who have sacrificed, who have served and died for this our country, and all who have struggled to move this country forward. In response, Taylor got mad, very mad. Shame on you, Taylor said on first take in reference to Drew Brees. Would Drew Brees do this if there was no backlash? Did his heart actually change? She's talking about of his apology. You were not going to do the right things before. I really wonder why offer the apology is happening now. I'm going to give give you a theory that doesn't help his cause. I'm exhausted and I'm tired of having to listen to someone say something like that And then having to sit back, well, maybe he didn't. Maybe it's not in his heart. When you reveal yourself to me and you say something like that, and you say it out of an intolerant mind and or heart, or non-empathetic heart, for the last five years, all we've seen is countless deaths on the street. That is a blatant lie, and we all know it. My patience left my body when I watched George Floyd take his last breath. So, one of two things are true. Maria Taylor is a forgiving person who doesn't hold a grudge and who always puts team first. Somewhere, the now-canceled Rachel Nichols just fainted. Number two, Taylor was never actually mad at Breeze. Instead, she performed like she was on Broadway, mad for the brand. Uh, Bobby Burak and myself will take door number two. C. 
When Breeze expressed his patriotic fervor, Taylor saw an opportunity, one that she thought would triple her market value. It almost worked as she tried to extort $8 million a year during contract negotiations from ESPN. She had not turned into a slightly less angry version of Keith Oberman. She could have eventually succeeded Stephen A. Smith as the face of ESPN. I'm not so sure about that. Now, let's go down here. While ESPN has become more radicalized for years, racial tensions reached a peak after George Floyd's death. Last year, ESPN talents gained leverage by making headlines involving racial matters. Taylor and her then-colleague seized the moment and used Breeze as a launching point. By pretending Breeze's patriotic comments were offensive, they capitalized on ESPN's cowardice. They knew that the network would never push back. You could call that fraud our business. Honestly, the two words often mean the same. Though Breeze also looks like a coward, by chumming up to Taylor as though nothing happened, there's not much he can do. If Breeze crosses Taylor, it's over. In comes Taylor's army at the New York Times, an army like that doesn't stop after victory. The collapse of Rachel Nichols was only a tease. Someone is next, Breeze, trying to make sure it isn't him. Anyway, the new rookie NBC duo, I, I wish the new rookie NBC duo the best. I do not. As long as Breeze agrees to play Robin to Taylor's Batman, this combination could work at least for a year or two. Good God. Well, number one, I got a fact that Drew... I got a problem with the fact that Drew Brees ever apologized for that crap. Okay, number one, I didn't buy the apology. I truly believe he believes what he originally said, which turns him into a complete loser, a complete coward, and he's not willing to step up and have a backbone and say... You know what? He could have said nothing. I do have a theory that his agent probably called him and said, Drew, if you do not apologize, you are not getting in the Hall of Fame for a very long time because of the woke sports media. Do I believe a conversation like that probably happened? Yes. And Drew Brees should have told his agent to go kick rocks and pound sand. He talked about his grandfathers having served And that's why he felt like it was important. And you threw your grandfathers right under the bus, just like Maria Taylor threw you under the bus. So I've got no sympathy for Drew Brees here either, regardless of Maria Taylor and all the minions that came after him. Okay? Again, Drew Brees was the most disappointing person the entire sports calendar year for me last year. The entire sports year, period. Of all of, of all the entities that have gone woke and sold themselves out, and look, I think both of these turds are a couple of complete hypocrites. I don't think they believe for a second what they say, but I think Maria Taylor uses the shit to her advantage, and I think Drew Brees just lacks a complete spine. He knew, he knew it was going to hurt him if he did not bend the knee. Remember, his wife also bent both knees. Utterly ridiculous. Um, I find both of these individuals repugnant. I used to be a big Drew Brees fan. I liked Maria Taylor. I did. I thought she was talented. And when they're talking about Maria Taylor being the Batman to Drew Brees' Robin, how sad is that? Because in no world would anybody ever tune in specifically to watch Maria Taylor. Drew Brees is the former NFL superstar quarterback and a future Hall of Famer. I wouldn't tune in to see Drew Brees now. Tell me what you think, black and white sports fans. Peace. I'm out. Till next time. Thanks for watching the show. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to tune in next time on Black and White Sports.